Rhode Island was a colony founded uh, by a bunch of dissidents who were chased out of uh, Massachusetts Bay. They were dissident Puritans, and a conglomeration of them gathered around uh, Roger Williams, uh, who, who was the leader in Providence, but there were others in, uh, in Quidneck Island and, and elsewhere. Uh, and the colony developed a reputation for being uh, a collection of oddballs. And, but it, it also had Williams, who was dedicated to the idea of separation of church and state way ahead of his time, and uh, pushed for that. And, and so the colony developed a reputation for being, uh, for being the, the center of freedom. There was no other place quite like it. Brown was founded in 1764. It was founded in the only colony in New England that did not have a college. Uh, and uh, the Baptists in New England uh, wanted a college. Uh, they had become, I think, by 1764, the fastest growing denomination in the country. Uh, and uh, they were feeling their oats. They were accused of being unlearned. And so I think they felt uh, it's time to have a place like Harvard or Yale or to train our ministers and also to train uh, people in the liberal arts. Baptists had a particular concern for religious freedom, separation of church and state, because they had been persecuted so much. So even Baptists elsewhere in the country were promoters of, of religious freedom, religious liberty. So it was perfect fit for them to be in Rhode Island uh, where, uh, where you had a tradition started by Williams uh, of, of religious freedom, of separation of church and state. All of the colonies uh, prior to the revolution uh, had slavery, legalized slavery. Slavery existed everywhere in the world and had existed for thousands of years. It's actually the revolution and uh, people in, in, in Rhode Island uh, were one of the leaders, along with, with Quakers in, in uh, Pennsylvania, to, to contest slavery. But certainly Brown used slave labor, uh, but so didn't uh, every college in the country that needed, uh, needed any kind of labor force. Uh, slavery was, was everywhere. When President uh, Simmons erected that uh, committee and that uh, whole program, to deal with, uh, with freedom and, 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 uh, and slavery, or justice and slavery, I think was a worthwhile project. To, because Brown, uh, we all, all of us, the whole country needs to know about the origins of our race relations. And it goes back to the 18th century, to the 17th century, to the beginnings of the history of the country. And I think that was a worthwhile project. Uh, it certainly led to, uh, I think, a lot of uh, good lecturers coming in, and a self-understanding of where, 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 uh, where Brown stood in, on that issue. Well, Brown instituted uh, the, uh, the new curriculum, which uh, defied uh, <laughs> the conventions at the time in the, in the 1960s, and we were the first to open up uh, choices for, for students, and, and I think it was a, a a wonderful thing for Brown's uh, applicant pool. People came. It, it's not quite as, as loose and anarchic as, as uh, many people outside think because there are, each of the departments has its own requirements. But I think that was one way in which we uh, took on the world. But I, of course, just the founding itself uh, as uh, by, by the Baptists uh, was, I think, with, with, with this sense of religious freedom without without uh, confining the student body to any particular denomination, was itself a, uh, a, a mean, an innovation and, and I think a radical, uh, a radical step. When I first came to Brown in 1969, it was the first year in which the new curriculum was being implemented, I was a little surprised. But as it turned out, I think it worked out quite well. Um, Few students abuse it. Most students, uh, in fact, all of our language uh, departments are over-enrolled. Uh, there are very few people abusing the, the system. We seem to, they seem to distribute themselves naturally out of their own free will. And also, it's a little misleading because each of the departments has its own, um, require, ha has its own requirements, and, and so the students aren't free to just do anything, and, and they aren't. They're really, I think, uh, disciplining themselves, and it seems to me that that's a 
a far better way than telling people what they should take or should not take. Because of the possibility of independent study, I've had some independent studies, the students are able to con conceive of their own project and work it out, and they really deeply evolve when they do that. Uh, and it's not something coming down from on high, it's something they've worked out. And uh, to con talk, you know, create a thesis or create a project uh, that on something they want to work on that's academically rigorous. That, that's very, very impressive. Right from the beginning, right up to my day of retirement, my, my feeling about the students was that they were uh, superb. When I came here, the history department at Brown was relatively small, but over the course of my career, it grew from roughly nine members to about 30, and it was an extraordinary experience being part of a department to see it grow in that way. We developed uh, new fields, um, everything from Asian history to Middle Eastern history to the history of women. It was just an extraordinary period in the history, in the history of, the, of the university. Of, of growth, at least in the history department. Brown has one of the most beautiful campuses in the country, and on the hill, uh, it just adds to it. The, the ceremonies uh, that are involved with, with the college, uh, the march through the gates in, in the fall, and then the commencement where they march out of the campus down the hill to the, to the Baptist church. It seems to me that that kind of tradition is, is, is compelling. It's, it's just so beautiful and I think every student uh, loves that. My daughter went to Brown so I know something of this from personal experience.